Hello, everyone. This is Kerwin, and welcome to another episode of What's Happening in Travel. Uh, this is Kerwin. Uh, actually, it's What's Happening in Travel with Kushu and Kerwin. And my name is Kerwin. Kushu is not here today. Today, I wanted to talk about something a little different. Um, first, uh, my background is uh, Hawaiian Airline Boeing 787. And that is actually the topic of today's discussion. Uh, Hawaiian Airlines, that's what we're going to talk about. This is one of the U.S. airlines that very few people know exist. Uh, probably because it's in Hawaii and it's away from the mainland. And unless you really go to Hawaii or live on the West Coast of the United States or uh, in Australia or somewhere in Asia, you don't really know that Hawaiian Airlines exists. But Hawaiian Airlines is one of the airlines that's in the United States. It is based in Hawaii. Matter of fact, I think they're going to be 95 years old or something like that. So they're, yeah, they're, they've been around a long time, but you don't really hear about them at all. They fly uh, primarily from Hawaii, from the uh, intra-Hawaiian islands, and they fly to the West Coast. They also go to Australia. They go to American Samoa. Uh, they go to uh, Asia, they go to, I think they go to um, Seoul, but uh, they're actually quite good. Matter of fact, Alaska, Alaska, Hawaiian Airlines flies from one of the, I think they fly the longest route in the United States, which is flying from Honolulu to Boston. And I actually was able to take that flight the last year. Um, and they fly the A330. The A330 is what they primarily use for long haul. Uh, but they've just signed a deal with Boeing to get some brand new 787s, dash nines, which is the airplane that's in my uh, background. This is actually a photo from Hawaiian Airlines. And the reason why I'm talking about this today is uh, they have just launched a new business class and the new business class is called well they call it their premium cabin but it really is uh, it really is their is their business class and it is called give you the correct name I don't want to want to mess it up uh it is called uh Lihoku so it's Lihoku Lihoku Suites, L-E-I-H-O-K-U. And they are the new Life Flat Seats that they have. Now I have a new website, lifeflatseats.net. And if you head over there, you can take a look and read the entire uh, press release that came from Hawaiian Airlines and that. But uh, I just want to give you a brief one here. So uh, they are going to be getting uh, next year, 2024, is when the 787s is going to join the fleet. And they have a really great video that kind of tells you about how they came up with a concept. When you get on airplanes, uh, you don't notice it because you just get on and you get off, right? But as an airline geek, uh, they, they a lot goes into the design. So like, for example, when you get on the Hawaiian uh, planes, they show, they have like shadows. You see like, it, it, they just look like leaves but they're really the shadows of the leaves and it's kind of get you into the spirit of what Hawaii is. Um, the the uh, l l l lihoku, lihoku actually means uh, garland of stars. And so um, it's a, and garland is a, is, a, is a lei, same thing. And uh, what they'll do is that at nights they'll put blue lighting in the cabin and to simulate stars. Some airlines already do this in the 787s. And the thing with the 787s is that they have, like you could get basically any light that you want. So what they normally do with these flights is uh, because these 787 use on long flights, they use the light to simulate, uh, help your body get used to the time difference when you travel. Um, the 787 is actually one of the airplanes that takes care of, helps your circadian rhythm 
um, because of the pressurization of the cabin. So uh, it's kind of cool that they're getting these now. Hawaiian, currently they've got the 717s and they've got the A330s and now they're gonna be adding the 787 to the fleet. I would have thought that they were gonna get the, uh, uh, give me one sec. Uh, I would have thought that they were gonna get the seven, let's back up a little bit. Thought they were gonna get the, there's one more aircraft type, sorry. I thought they were gonna get this, the Airbus, but I guess that deal didn't quite go the way it should. But let's just take a little look at their website. So they they fly the A330, the A321 NEOs, and they use A321 NEOs for Hawaii to the West Coast. They're a single aisle airplane, but they can do the long hauls. And then they have the 787, which are coming next year. And they use the 717 that they fly uh, intra-island. 717s are cool because when you get on, they give you this little juice thing. And it's like a, a juice from the island. And it's actually quite, quite nice what they do. Some of the places that they do serve, I'm going to give you an idea because most people don't know uh, that Hawaiian airline uh, is actually a U.S. airline because you know you don't you don't really see it right. So within Hawaii, they fly to uh, all the islands: um, uh, Kaui, Oahu, Maui, and uh, the uh, the island of uh, Hawaii. And that's what they use the 717s for. Now, the 717s is actually, so um, when Boeing, when Boeing, in the airline business, there was a merger. And there was a merger between McDonnell Douglas and Boeing. They were the two aircraft manufacturers in the U.S. And when McDonnell Douglas merged, with uh, Boeing, to the Bo Boeing took over McDonnell Douglas, they had an airplane that they had just launched, the MD-95, I think, the, I think the name was. And so when Boeing got it, obviously they weren't going to call it the MD-95, they had to change the name. Now Boeing does sevens. So they have a 707, 727, 737, 747, 757, 767, 787s. And uh, so the thought was, well, what are they going to do with the MD-95? For some reason, they never had a 717. So they decided to name this airplane the 717. Uh, Delta got some of them. And I think Delta may actually still be flying them. But they're basically, the it was like the most, the, 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 the latest version of the DC-9 is what they were, which is why they have the two engines at the back. And you can tell them though differently because they're actually shorter and the engines are actually quite big. So they look really kind of oversized. But uh, so they fly those along with Delta. Now, uh, it's going to give you some of the international routes that they do fly. So within the US, they fly, just looking it up on the website so I don't mess it up. They do Austin, Boston. Las Vegas. Now these are all with the Airbus A330, Long Beach, Los Angeles, uh, New York City. Well, they use the A321 to the West Coast. Uh, so there's Oakland, Ontario, Phoenix, Portland, Sacramento, San Diego, San Francisco, San Jose, and Seattle. Now that is all to Hawaii, to from Hawaii, uh, which is probably why most people don't end up seeing it unless you live on the West Coast of the United States. In Asia, they fly to Auckland, Cook Islands, Fukuoka in Japan, Osaka in Japan, Pago Pago, that's in American Samoa, Papete in Tahiti, Sapporo in Japan, Seoul in South Korea, Sydney, Australia, and Tokyo, Japan. So uh, if you live in, say, you know, one of like, you can go Boston to Australia, you would just go via um, via Hawaii, Honolulu. 
She says, not a, it's not a bad way to break up the journey. Now, the flight is like 12 hours between Boston and and, um, and Hawaii. It's quite a long one. Now, one thing that they have is um, people know, you normally don't think about the partners that these airlines have. Hawaiian Airlines does not really have any U.S. airline partners uh, except JetBlue. So the thing is that they are not a part of any major alliance. It's one of the few, well, one of the larger airlines that's not part of the alliance. Typically in the U.S., you have United, which is a part of Star Alliance. I'm one of the founding, founding members. And you have uh, Alaska and America, which is part of One World. And then you have Delta, which is a part of SkyTeam. But none of the other airlines are a part of the, any of the major or officially any part of any major alliances. Uh, some of the partner for Hawaiian Airlines that they do code share with. And a code share is when you buy a ticket. So you buy a ticket on, on say, Hawaiian Airlines, but it's flown by JetBlue. So when you go to check in, you go to the JetBlue check-in counter, even though your flight has a Hawaiian Airlines flight number on it. And they normally tell you that on the ticket. So their partner, their code share flights with China Airlines, Japan Airlines, JetBlue, Korean Air, and Virgin Australia. And they also, on in, in the other vein, uh, these airlines that I'm going to say now actually use Hawaiian Airlines as, as a code share. Well, they're marketing code on Hawaiian operated flights, which is actually code share the other way. And interestingly enough, there now you have U.S. carriers. Yeah, so they're, they're not they're not alliance partners, but they have codes on there. Reason why they do this is, um, like United doesn't go to Pago Pago, but um, let's say you want to go to Pago Pago, you could probably buy a United ticket, go to Pago Pago, and the flight will be operated by Hawaiian Airlines. Now you'd have to fly on a United carrier to Hawaii and then take Hawaiian Airlines from there to Pago Pago, for example. So uh, Air China, American, China Airlines, Delta Airlines, Japan Airlines, JetBlue again, Korean Air, Philippine Airlines, Turkish Airlines, and United. So those are the ones that are, that are in there. Um, and they tell you the markets, right? So let's see if I could find, where is it that United won? So in terms of JetBlue, uh, you can fly a JetBlue flight with a Hawaiian number if you do like uh, JFK and select flight tour from Boston, right? So if you go, um, if you go somewhere like if you go Hawaii to to JFK, uh, well, not really. That's actually a Hawaiian flight, but it would be a market that's flown by JFK flown by JetBlue, but um, Hawaiian want to extend its reach, uh, for example. So they may, maybe they'll do something like Providence to JFK, and then you do end up doing JFK to uh, Hawaii. It's kind of how kind of how that will work. You normally you normally can't just buy a code share flight by itself. It's normally in association with another flight on that particular on the, on, uh, on that air. I guess a little confusing. But when you go to buy it on the on the website, the rules that you always have to say operated by. So you will know that this particular airline is this particular flight number is not operated by uh the airline that you're actually <laughs> gonna buy it from. I'm sorry, Co coach here gets a little confusing. Um, but I guess I should probably explain coach here since we're talking about it. So uh, the reason why airlines do coach here is, is they want to expand their reach. And so uh, before uh, Virgin Atlantic joined SkyTeam, they were coach sharing with uh, Delta Airlines. So you will see something like a flight that goes from Los Angeles, say to Atlanta, and it has a Virgin Atlantic flight number on it. And you're like, well, Virgin Atlantic doesn't fly Los Angeles to Atlanta. Uh, no, they do not. They But the flight is operated by Delta. And the airline, Delta, has to put a note there that says operated by Delta. So in LA, it becomes a little confusing because if you're on all these code shared flights, you have to check in at the operating carrier's window. 
So if you were doing, say, the LA to Atlanta, Atlanta to London, and the LA to Atlanta portion is flown by Delta, you would have to go to the Delta ticket counter, although you have a Virgin Atlantic ticket. And your second segment, Atlanta to JFK uh, to London, is flown by by Virgin. So when you but you would have already gotten a boarding pass for all the way through. And when you get to Atlanta, you go to the Virgin Atlantic gate to get your Virgin Atlantic operated flight to um, to London. Gets a little confusing. And so, yeah, people show up at the wrong counter all the time, but agents are usually quite good about telling people where they need, where they need to go. Um, they don't, they don't list any of the co-chair flights on the U.S. airlines in here. I was just thinking I could find an example uh, that I could show you guys, but on their website, they have a list and they talk about how and what you need to do when you have the co-chair, when you have the different co-chair flights. So, um, that I guess is the is the main thing that oh well of course I didn't talk about their business class on the new seven eight seven they have a new business class which is a one to one cabin and if you go to lifeflightseats.net you can take a look at what the um, uh, airline cabin is is gonna gonna look like it is actually a suite and it has a little door so you can actually close the door. And uh, it says 30, I think it's 38 seats, um, which is actually really, uh, really, really cool. I don't know what they have. Let me just make sure it is 38. Uh, 38 is kind of 34, sorry. So it's 34 in a one-to-one -one configuration, uh, which means that it's one-to-one, -one, so it's four, and it's four into 34. So that's four eights, 32. So there's one row uh, that only has two seats in it. And uh, it's probably, probably you have two, I haven't seen the, the, the layout uh, as yet. And in 2024, they should be flying, they should be flying those. So go check out Hawaiian Airlines. This is not sponsored or anything, but I thought there was, um, this is an airline that you don't hear much about although they're doing really great things over there in Hawaii. And so uh, if you live in any of the U.S. cities that I talked about, uh, then you can, it's really West Coast. If you're on the West Coast and you want to get to Hawaii, it's one of the options that you that you have to get to Hawaii. And if you go into American Samoa, this is a way <clears throat> to get to uh, American, American Samoa. So uh, that's all I have for this week. And um, I hope this is a little helpful. Just trying to give people a, diff a little history of um, the other uh, U.S. And actually, speaking of history, I'm, I'm going to read this history real quick before I go. So Hawaiian, Hawaiian Airlines was incorporated on January 30th, 1929. And so uh, under the name Inter Island Airways. So that year, thousands gathered in Honolulu to witness the departure of Hawaii's first scheduled inter-island flight to Maui and the Big Island of Hawaii. The fleet was comprised of two eight-passenger Sikorsky S-38 amphibian planes. Six years later, larger 16-passenger Sikorsky S-43s were added to accommodate increased traffic and newly authorized inter-island airmail service. Yes, yeah, so, so they got, uh, they're at 94 years. Um, and that's a pretty, pretty whole, pretty old airline. Um, but you know, they're not the oldest, uh, you know, I think the next, the next, uh, thing we'll, we'll talk about the oldest airlines. And I think that would be, that'll be fun and interesting, uh, to talk about. But, uh, when they did their 90th, uh, celebration, um, there's a piece on their website when they celebrated their 90th anniversary and at the 94th now. Uh, so they're on their way uh, to being uh, to being a hundred. It's a long time for an airline. So that's all I have. This episode is about Hawaiian Airlines, and uh, go to lifeflatseats.net to check out the program um, about their new seats and things like that. So you can check that out. So this is Kerwin with what's happening in travel with Kushu and Kerwin. 
have a good flight and go check out Hawaiian Airlines. And I'm looking forward to seeing the 787s dash nines join the fleet next year. All right, everybody, have a great flight.